friends, welcome to the third episode of the Mache Taxidermy series. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to add details. So things like ears, horns, teeth, all of those things I'm going to demonstrate in this video today. And the last step that we're going to complete with this video is adding in a mixture of something called joint compound. And this is actually a construction material. It's not usually used for paper mache. And I'm really excited that it works so well. I just discovered a technique on Pinterest that is amazing. So I'm really excited for you guys to try it out. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll begin by looking at your reference photo of your animal for an extended amount of time so that you can study the ear shape. I would recommend setting your animal directly onto a piece of railroad board and then using a pencil to sketch out the shape that you want the ears to end up as at the end. Now, keep in mind that we want these ears to be able to curl forward. So that means that we're going to need to make them a little bit larger than we think we'll need. And then we're going to cut that space out and curl it around so that it will actually end up smaller than the shape that we're tracing out. So to curl it, I would recommend using something rounded like a bigger pen or a highlighter, even a pencil is fine, just to help this thicker paper start to curl and uh, doing it without creases. Once you've done that, you're going to curl it to the shape that you think matches your reference photo the most. Make sure that you're still paying attention to your picture. Once you've got one ear the way that you want it to be permanently, you're going to trace that ear shape while it's still flat. So before you assemble your first ear, you need to trace it so that you can have both of your ears be even. Also remember that you want your ears to be going opposite ways. So if it's curving off to one direction, you're going to flip it the opposite way so that they're symmetrical on the head and not curving both towards the same direction. Once both of your ears are cut and ready, then you're going to take them, curl them to the angle that you would like them to stay, and you're going to use a larger piece of tape to wrap all the way around the base. When you cut your piece of tape, make sure that it is large enough to go all the way around because it will require that tension on the tape to keep it curled, and if it doesn't wrap all the way, it won't have something to hold on to. You might end up covering that bottom section with tape. So I actually went through and added another piece wrapping around that just to kind of curve it a bit. You'll do this to both of your ears to make sure that it is symmetrical on both sides. When you're ready to attach your ears to your head, make sure that you have your animal laying flat on that surface that it's going to be resting up against the wall with. If you attach your ears too far back on the head, then when you mount your animal, you might actually not have enough space for your ears to rest naturally. So make sure that you're planning this accordingly and where the wall will be when your animal is hanging. I just used longer pieces of tape to attach to the ear itself and then to stick onto the head to make sure that it's mounted and stays there really well. Next, you should flip your sculpture over and make sure that your ears are attached on the back as well. Make sure that your pieces of tape are not too tight because if they are stretched from your head to your ear and they're lifted up a little bit, then it will create that space once we add the paper mache over the top of it and it'll look uneven around your ear. So it is helpful to add another piece of tape just going around the base to make sure it's pressing the other pieces of tape down into that crease. The last step is to look at your animal from the front and make sure that your ears are symmetrical and that the angles are the same. So double check and make sure that it looks good from all angles and that your ears are exactly where you would like them to stay. The next demonstration I'm going to show you is using foil to create the antlers. Now I'm making antlers for my elk, but this technique would work very well for anything on your animal that has a point to it that is curved in an interesting angle. So foil works well for a lot of different parts of your animal sculpture. 
I have two main tips to give you when you're working with foil. And the first is that if you're making two of something, you should make them at the same time. You should even tear your pieces of foil to be the same size at the same time before you begin creating your piece. Foil is great for creating curves and points, and that's what I'm doing here when I'm creating my antlers. The second tip that I want to give you for working with foil is to leave a tab, essentially, at the bottom of your piece that you're making. So you, know, you will notice that at the bottom of these two antler horns, I left a really large swath of foil so that I can have that to tape onto my base. Two examples of reasons why you would use foil for this sculpture would be for antlers in a situation like this where you want your antlers to curve and come to a point because that's very difficult to do with paper. Another reason you might use foil would be to create teeth. So if your animal has an open mouth and you want to create elongated, pointed, or curved teeth, then foil would be an excellent option for you. I'll say that working from experience with foil, it's very difficult to make it look like what you're imagining without continuing to look at your reference photo. Even as an established artist myself, going through and forming these antlers was kind of confusing for me because I wasn't looking at my picture right away. It took really studying that photo to make sure that I was matching what I saw before it actually started looking like antlers. So my biggest tip would be to look at your reference photo as much as possible when you're creating additions like this. To attach my foil antlers, I made sure that the base was spread out and surrounding my head all the way around that antler before I started taping it on. And I used fairly large pieces of tape and went all the way around to make sure that it was going to be stable and sturdy. Once the main sections of the antler were attached, then I slowly started adding on the individual horns and I used that tab or that swath of foil at the base and I used that to stretch it around my original piece and then I added a section of tape going over the top of that just as reinforcement. Foil can be very flimsy in some of these jointed areas, so it's really important to go through and reinforce every single area where you have foil joining another piece of foil. And that's how you can add your foil details. Our next step requires a product called joint compound, which is actually used in construction and for drywalling, but we are going to be using it on our paper mache for this next step. So our goal with this product is to use a spatula and slowly fill in any dips, gaps, or inconsistent textures with this joint compound. So we're using that flat surface of the spatula to push into any lower surfaces, to fill any holes, and to even out any surfaces that might be a little on the lumpy side. So think of it like you're frosting a cake. So you're trying to fill all of those little spots, you're trying to make sure it's covered evenly, and you're trying to just swipe across it so that it's as flat and smooth as possible. You're going to use that same method with all of your attachments. So any ears, antlers, anything you've made with a separate material, you're going to use that joint compound in the crease up against that space where it attaches to your animal. So first, this will make sure that it's sturdy and held on really well. And second, it's going to help that edge taper a little bit so that it's not such an abrupt corner. For those same reasons, it's very important that you go all the way up against the mat board that you're using as the base for your animal. So we're trying to fill that gap and make sure that it's one cohesive piece rather than an animal that's taped onto a backboard. So we're trying to fill that gap and make sure that it is connected and solid all the way around. I highly recommend going over areas where you might have bumps, like I had a lot of bumps on this snout of my elk, so I'm going over this area multiple times and I'm trying to just keep my spatula as level as possible. So I don't have to press it all the way up against that shape, I'm actually trying to create a new shape by pressing lighter. So I'm trying to fill those gaps, not press all the way down and make it smooth. 
This is such an important step with this project, going through and filling in every single divot, every single little bump, and making it as smooth as possible is so important during this phase. If you don't complete this step accurately, you're going to have a really lumpy mess of a paper mache animal. So make sure you're going through and smoothing out every single part. Take your time. This step should take almost an entire class period. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this episode. We really appreciate it and hope that you are learning a lot. So let's keep on going.